Good day, students of Ordoneta City. We are down the third week of our quarter four. And our topic, the rejection region and test statistics in hypothesis testing. I'm your lecturer, Mr. Jeffrey M. Soriano. And at the end of the week, we would like to master the following learning competencies. First, we would like to identify the appropriate rejection region for a given level of significance when A. The population variance is assumed to be known B. The population variance is assumed to be unknown and C. The central limit theorem is to be used. We would like to master also how to compute for the test statistics value for the population mean. So basically, part pa rin ito ng ating processes na may encounter in hypothesis testing. So in week 1 and week 2, you have learned the two types of hypothesis, or null and alternative hypothesis. We also learned how to select what type of test statistics is to be used. So now, we would be dealing with how to compute for the test statistics for the for the population mean. And also, we would like to find out where we could find the appropriate rejection region given the level of significance. So the rejection region in different types of test hypothesis. So it is important in hypothesis testing to determine the level of significance. So the level of significance denoted by alpha represents the doubt that the obtained confidence interval contains the population mean. The region that this represents is found in the tails of a probability distribution. This region is called the rejection region. Basically, the rejection of the null hypothesis is implied when the test statistics is found in the rejection region. Different rejection regions are determined by the type of hypothesis test to be conducted. The type of test to be conducted depends on the formulated alternative hypothesis. So the different types of tests of hypothesis on a population mean are we have the right-tailed test. So this type of test is conducted when you want to show the population mean is greater than the population or no, is greater than the previous claim value. So you can see the probability distribution. The shaded area represents the cr critical or rejection region and it separated the acceptance region and the critical region is separated by the critical value. We also have the left tailed test. This type of test is conducted when you want to show that the population population mean is less than the previous claim value. So the difference between the right and the left tail test is that where is the rejection region located? If it's if the rejection region is located at the right, then it's called the right tail test, of course. And you are showing that the population mean is greater than. On the left tail test, the rejection region is located at the left and you are showing that the population mean is less than the previous claim value. So how does it look uh, how does the probability distribution look like? You see that the critical region is found at the left uh, tail of the probability distribution and our alternative hypothesis which will be denoted by h sub 1 in some book they uh, they know the notation they are using is h sub a well your alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is less than some value and we also have the two tailed test in this uh, in this case alpha is divided into two regions so you'll put the uh, the two divided regions on the 
left and the right tail of the distribution. So this type of test is conducted when you want to show that the population mean is not equal to the previous claim value. The probability distribution of the two-tailed test is seen. And then notice that the critical regions are, are found at, on the left and the right side of the probability distribution. In this case, we want to show that the population mean is not equal to the previous claim value. Let's try an example of this. Let's take a look at some of uh, the problems and let's let's see whether what type of test are we going to use. Okay, so in example one, the average time in a week that the student stays in the library at Palina is senior high school is 73 minutes with a standard deviation of five minutes and the population of time is normally distributed. When the new log-in and log-out mechanism is introduced, a sample of 49 students have been found out that the average time they stay in the library is 80 minutes. Now, without even uh, uh, showing or testing the hypothesis, we would like to um, determine what type of uh, of test are we going to use and where can the rejection region be? So in A, if alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance is used to test that the average length of time that the students in Palina East Senior High School stays in the library is not 73 minutes, where can the rejection region be? In B, same set of conditions but we would like to find out where can the rejection region be okay, if we are going to test that the average time that the student stays in the library is more than 73 minutes. So let's take A. If alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance is used to test that the average length of time that the students in Palina East Senior High School stays in the library is not 73 minutes, where can the rejection region be? So, let's formulate the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis in this case is the average length of time that the students in Palina East Senior High School stays in the library is not 73 minutes. So this means we have to use two-tailed test and the rejection region is drawn at the right. Okay, so those are the rejection regions. Okay, so what about, so the type of test that we're going to use in this kind of situation where we want to show that the population mean is not equal to uh, a certain value is a two-tailed test. So, how about if alpha level of significance is used to test that the average length of time that the students in Palina East Senior High School stays in the library is more than 73 minutes, where could the reject rejection region be? So again, we'll form the alternative hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis is the average length of time that the students in Palina East senior high school stays in the library is more than 73 minutes. So this entails a right tail test. Okay. So to give emphasis on the phrase is more than. So that is why you have to test that the population mean is more than 73 minutes or greater than 73 minutes. And the rejection region for that case is drawn at the right. So the acceptance region and the rejection region are separated by the critical value and the critical or the rejection region is found at the right since your population mean that you are going to test is greater than some value. Now one of the um, processes 
in pop in testing population mean in testing hypothesis on population mean is to find or compute for the test statistics okay so the test statistics when our null hypothesis involves the population mean are as follows so the test statistics for a sample mean for a large size when sigma is known or the standard deviation is known and the sample size is greater than or equal to 30 we use the z values in our standard normal distribution so the value of z can be computed as follows z equals the sample mean minus the population mean over the standard deviation over the square root of n now in the in the above formula if sigma is known we can use s if sigma rather is unknown we can use the sample standard deviation in replace of it now in some practices in some books uh, they use standard deviations of such data of the previous uh, data yung mga nakuha nila dati pa na standard deviation ng ganyang klaseng data they use it as basis or sigma but in our case we can also use s in the place of it kapag normally distributed yung ating value and n is greater than or equal to 30 so ano nga ba ang gamit ng test statistics well the test statistics is used to compare uh, in the so we are we would like to compare our test statistics from the critical value now in practice in hypothesis testing if your test statistics is greater than the critical value the absolute value of the test statistics is greater than the critical value or uh, let's say the test statistics is found at the rejection region okay kasi mayroon tayo mga negative values pala dyan at saka positive values if the test statistics is found in the region in the critical region or the rejection region then we will reject the null hypothesis so basically uh, in this presentation we would like only to compute the test statistics and on the next video presentation for the fourth week then we're going to use this test statistics okay to make conclusions about our population mean now the test statistics is different when our n is less than or equal to 30 or we say we have a small sample size so the test statistics for a sample mean from a small sample size is given below okay so again when sigma is unknown and n is less than 30 okay we use the t values in the t distribution the values of t can be computed as follows t equals x bar minus mu over s all over square root of n and v is calculated as n minus 1 so in the above formula v is the degree of freedom and uh, makikita natin yan later on doon sa t distribution natin okay okay so let's give an example of how we are going to compute for the test statistics let's take a look at this problem the average time in a week that a student stays in the library at Palina East Senior High School is 73 minutes with a standard deviation of 5 minutes and the population is normally distributed from that uh, from that uh, statement we can say that the population mean is 73 that's our mu and the population standard deviation sigma equals 5 minutes when the new log in and log out mechanism is introduced a sample of 49 students so that's our sample size 49 has been found out that the average time they stay in the library is 80 minutes so what is the value of the test statistics so we are tasked to find out what is the test so the test statistics with the sample size n is large that is n is greater than or equal to 30 
is determined by converting the sample mean x bar, which is 80, to its corresponding z values. The calculation is as follows. So we have z equals x bar minus mu all over sigma over n. Now x bar, as we know, is 80 and mu is 73. So we have 80 minus 73 divided by sigma, which is the standard deviation of our population, divided by the square root of the sample size n, which is 49. Now simplifying that, we get 9.8. Okay, so that's 83 minus 73, that would be 7 over 5 divided by 7, so we get 9.8 as an estimate for our z value. Now, example 3. The owner of a manufa manufacturing company of batteries of laptops assumes that when their batteries are fully charged, they last for 240 minutes or more without charging. Now, a sample of 16 batteries was tested. It was found out that these batteries last for 238 minutes at an average with a standard deviation of 4 minutes. Now, let us compute the test statistics in this situation. Now, it's crucial for you to know the sample size because that determines what test, what the, what type of test are you going to use? Or what is the type of test statistics that you're going to use? Now, since we only have a sample size that is 16, okay, we're going to use what? Okay, that's very good. That's the test, uh, the t-test or the t-distribution. So the test statistics, when the sample size n is small, that is n is less than 30, is determined by converting the sample mean x bar, which is equal to 238, to its corresponding t value. value. So the calculation is as follows. t equals x bar minus mu over s over square root of n. Now we have those values for x bar is 238, mu is 240, the standard deviation of the sample is 4 all over the sample size which is the square root of 16. And when you simplify that, you get a negative 2 test statistics. So the test statistics is negative 2 with 15 degrees of freedom. So it's also... Um, it's also advised or it's also one of the process it's also included in the process that you should determine uh, how many degrees of freedom do you have and the degree of freedom can be calculated as v equals n minus 1 since your sample size is 16 so 16 minus 1 your degrees of freedom is 15 so the test statistics and the degree of freedom later on will be used in determining where is our test statistics going to fall? Is it outside the critical region or inside the critical region? So that's it for this week. Uh, at the next, uh, next week, we're going to use these test statistics. In, uh, you are going to compare these statistics to our critical value and we can make uh, conclusions about our population mean. So until then, so thank you for watching. Always be safe, stay home, and always learn from home.